Custom Pokemon cards. There's nothing quite like making your very own one-of-a-kind card, is there? If you guys have been following the channel, you know this is something I absolutely love to do. We've made them using online tools, and we've even drawn them entirely from scratch. But by far the closest you can come to a totally real-looking Pokemon card is using this method right here in this video. What's up guys, Vitkumon here, and welcome to the next episode where I'll be showing you guys how to make your very own custom holographic and shiny Pokemon cards like I have right here. I absolutely love the way this thing turned out, and if you want to learn how to make one for yourself, then without further ado, let's get into the video. Alright, so your first step will be to choose the picture or Pokemon you'd like to do for your custom card, and you can do this one of two ways. So the first way is to simply take an already existing card from Google and just do that. So go ahead and look up any Pokemon card you'd like, find a nice image, and download it. As you can see here, I've googled Gyarados EX 123 out of 122, which is a secret rare card I've always wanted but could never manage to pull, so no matter, I'll just make one myself. Here's a high quality image, which is obviously ideal, so I'll go ahead and save it to my PC, and there we go. Just like that, I've got my image and I'm ready to move on to the next step. And the second way requires a little more artistic skill, and that is to do the card entirely custom, digitally creating the art, the border, the text, and everything else yourself. Don't worry if this is too complicated for you. I don't expect many of you will be going this route, but if you want the ultimate custom card, this is definitely the way to go. Either method you choose, you should end up right here, either with a card you downloaded from the internet, or with one you made yourself. Obviously, my card is completely custom, and I've made this Groudon right here, because you all know I love Groudon. I won't go into too much detail with how I specifically made this card, because again, I expect most of you will be downloading your card from the internet, but as you saw from the time lapse, if you are doing an entirely custom card, I did the art digitally in Procreate, on my iPad, then I used Photoshop to add in the template, and then finally I added in the text, so not too complicated, though the art certainly did take some time. I'll leave some links in the description to a font guide, and some blank templates, so if you are doing a fully custom card, then go ahead and check that out. And without further ado, once you've got your image, it's time to size it and print it. So when you've finally got your card picked out, or made, first, simply take that image and drag it onto a blank document. You can do this anywhere that is your preference, so Pages, Microsoft Word, or Google Docs as I'm using here, all work well. Once you've done that, you still need to size the card though, so that when you print it, it is the actual size of a real Pokemon card. Not too big, and not too small, but just perfect. In Google Docs, you can simply right click on the card, hit image options, size and rotation, and then you can input the size, which is 6.3 centimeters in width, and 8.8 centimeters in length. You can then copy and paste your card as many times as you'd like. I do recommend adding a few extra just in case you make a mistake, or if you want to add a few more cards. More certainly doesn't hurt at all, and the maximum you can fit on a page, as you can see here, is 9 with 3 rows of 3. Now that your card is properly sized, to print it, you will need transparency paper. Unfortunately, you can't just use regular printer paper here, because then your card won't have that beautiful holographic effect. Now, if you have some transparency film on hand, and a compatible printer, then great, but personally, I didn't, and I don't imagine all of you will, so in that case, you can simply take it to your nearest printing place and have them do it for you. I took mine to Staples, where they have an entire printing section, and with my document on a memory stick, they did it for me, and it turned out great. Now, if you've come this far, and this is impossible for you, that is you cannot under any circumstances print on transparency paper, and your parents won't help you at all, then do not fear, you can still make a custom card, though not quite like this one of course. And if you check out this video, linked right up here in the top, and continue from 7 minutes and 24 seconds printing section, you should be good to go. I'll also add a link to this video in the description. But anyways, all you have to do here is print your card and make sure you do so on transparency paper. Alright, so next you've got your cards printed on transparency film and you should have a page that looks something like this. So naturally, we should probably cut it out, right? I'm using a paper cutter here to make sure my cards are cut out as precisely as possible. But if that's not something you have, then you can simply use an X-Acto knife or even some scissors. Really, anything that cuts will work great here.
And once you've isolated one card, and it's all nice and cut out, then you can simply take some scissors and round off those corners to have a perfectly cut card. Now, it's important to note, be very careful here. You want to cut very carefully, and it's always better to take off a little bit too little than too much. It's very easy to mess up here, and trust me when I say I've messed up a couple cards. So when you're rounding those corners, make sure to go carefully. Now, for the next part, you will need a few more materials, and unlike most of my other videos, this project may require some that you might not have readily at home. But I don't want to scare you away, because honestly, these materials are all pretty cheap and easy to find. So, to begin, you'll need some cotton balls, though if you don't have these specifically, you can probably swap them out for something else. Next is 100% pure acetone. This is actually what nail polish remover is, so if there are any girls in the house, you might already have some. But I picked up a bottle at Walmart for about $4. After that, some spray adhesive. It's possible that you can get away with another type of glue, but I really recommend this, and it worked well for me. I had some left over from our previous project, but you can pick up a can at Walmart or really any craft store if you don't have any. You also want some latex or rubber gloves, so that you aren't getting any acetone or glue on your hands. And finally, the last thing you'll need are some reverse hollow or hollow cards that you don't particularly care about, because we will be sacrificing these to make your custom card. Alright, so to begin this step, first make sure you're either outside, if the weather permits that is, or in a well-ventilated room. That's because both the acetone and the spray adhesive have a pretty strong smell, so you don't really want to be breathing it in too much. Once you've done that, and you're in a nicely ventilated area, take a cotton ball and wet it with some acetone so that it is not absolutely soaking, but also not too dry, so right there in the middle. You need just enough for it to work, but you also don't want to end up drenching your card. Then, this is the tough part, I know, but take that damp cotton ball and use it to completely strip the ink off your holo card. I know this may hurt, it certainly did to me, as I saw this poor little guy slowly disappearing, but it's for the greater good, so persevere on. The card will eventually turn into something much nicer, so it's not being wasted, and it's definitely worth it. Especially because I know all of you are such great artists. But anyways, continue to work that cotton ball vertically, up and down, applying pressure as needed, until you are left with an entirely stripped card, and what looks almost like a shiny mirror. Definitely pretty cool to see what's underneath the Pokemon card, isn't it? It's also important to note that there are multiple different holo patterns, so whichever holo card you decide to strip down, that holo pattern will remain. So as you can see here, this is Dothler. It looks more like a plain holo. It's just all around a holographic and shiny card. And when we strip it down, that plain holo remains. But something like this rare candy, which has sort of these diagonal holo stripes, when we strip that down, it keeps those diagonal holo stripes. So make sure whichever holo card you guys are choosing, it's something that you're going to like and you're going to be happy with on your custom card. Once you've done that and you've got your beautiful and shiny stripped foil card, leave it for a few minutes to dry, and hopefully if all went well your stripped hollow should be looking something like this. If you are careful not to use too much acetone, it should not be warped, and the back should still be looking pristine, just like this. Though if either of these things happen to your card, don't worry too much, it should still work just fine and the damage is mostly cosmetic. But anyways, this is where the image of your custom card that you printed and cut out earlier comes in handy. So grab that, as well as your spray adhesive, or whatever glue you're using, and make sure you are still in that well ventilated area. Then take your spray adhesive and spray it as evenly as you can on your strip foil card so that it covers the entire thing. You want to spray just enough so that your transparent card will stick well, but also be very careful not to spray too much or your card will become very sticky and messed up. Once your holo card is sprayed, quickly, before the glue dries, take your transparent card and position it as best as you could on the foil one so that it aligns as perfectly as possible with the borders. You can do this while the glue is still a liquid, and quickly take your finger and shimmy the card back and forth, left and right, or in whichever direction, until it looks as perfect as possible to you. I kept doing that until I was happy with the way it aligned, and then I finally let it dry. And after that, you've pretty much completed your custom card, and while you're waiting, all you have to do really is make a few more. So there we have it. I've made my very own, completely custom, full art ground on V card. And not just one, I've actually made six to go ahead and add to my collection. I have to say, I am genuinely proud of how this card came out. It was definitely a long time in the making, especially the art, but I can now say that it was all well worth it. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. 
where I showed you how to make your very own custom holographic Pokemon card. Thank you all again for 10,000 subscribers, and without further ado, stay tuned for the next episode.